Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to the Nikabi Dari series by the pen, the sound of sisters raising their voices with the written word. I'm your host, Samar, and thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of By the Pen. Alhamdulillah, we have with us a sister here today talking about her book, inshallah, Maryam. Sister Maryam, could you please introduce yourself for the listeners and tell us about your book, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, my name is Maryam Yusuf and um, I have actually written eight books. So my latest one is called Remarkable Muslim Women Throughout the Ages. 20 Stories of Faith, Courage and Resilience, and um, it's a book that's aimed at children over 10. Um, it's also suitable for adults as well. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, tabarakallah. So um, I'll ask, uh, do you always think you had been an author since you've written eight books, you said, mashallah? Um, no, so what happened was after I had my fourth child, um, I didn't want to actually go out and work, um, and I wanted to, you know, focus on my family but I've always been active in my community but you know having four children and you know still nursing and things um I thought you know what can I do that's from what can I do at home you know where I can still be active you know but online mm -hmm. um because I've always believed you know in service to my community as well so mashallah Allah made a way for me and I started a, an, an actual you know blog and an Instagram page and I just started sharing my thoughts about religion and the things that were important to me and um, all of a sudden mashallah my page um, you know grew like you know really fast and um, I became an agony aunt and then I started offering you know people would especially the youth they'd always contact me um, about relationships and different kinds of advice so one of my books is actually called The Forbidden Relationship a handbook on love lust and um, heartbreak so what I did was I started compiling my quotes and the advice would give you know the feedback I'd received that mashallah let's really help somebody um come closer to Allah or break away from a haram relationship so what I did with um that's how my books kind of came <laughs> into being I kind of started creating all the advice and you know all the quotes um and mashallah that's how I started actually writing so it was really it really started off, you know, by having a good intention to serve Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from me. Amen. Amen, sister. Mashallah. So, yes, yeah, so if you could um, tell us briefly about uh, the books that you've written so far, and then we can talk more in detail about the latest one, inshallah. Yeah, okay. So, um, one is, I think, my, yeah, my first one was The Ocean of Inspiration. So that was the sharing faith, you know, reminders, and mashallah. Um, I just got so much positive feedback and I didn't really know how long, to be honest, I would be on Instagram for. I think it's actually been nearly, has it been about nine years, mashallah, now? And so I thought, you know what, I better do something, create these um, quotes that people find beneficial. Um, so that was a quote book. And then after that, I wrote a book, it was called Words of Wisdom. Um, it's like Words of Wisdom by, you know, like people like Sheikh Omar Suleiman, Sheikh Yasser Qadi and different sheikhs. So I had Mufti Mek as well. So, you know, um, I had to get the permission and mashallah. Um, so that was my second book. And so it just, you know, valuable advice on different topics such as like family, hardships, you know, um, faith, marriage. And I thought, you know what, they're, mashallah, we should they're really like valuable gems in our um, community. So I thought, we don't really have anything like that out there that I know of. We are we have quotes of you know our Scott um, Sheikhs mm -hmm. um and advice that I find benef I find beneficial. So mashallah, that was my second book. Um, you know, I'm trying to think now <laughs> which one in order. I mashallah. think my third one was um it's, it's, oh god, the rebirth of love, a journey to self-love. And that was more about, you know, a lot of people that contacted me, they had been through a lot of hardship because of maybe divorce or even like haram relationships where they were left heartbroken. And, you know, so it's just more like a self-love book, but it wasn't about the self. It's more about oneself and the, rela the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. because it, uh, that's where love comes from. For me, you know, if I, 
I wouldn't have been so merciful to myself if I didn't realize how merciful my Lord is to me. Of you course. know, so my self love comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and I wanted, you know, um, the woman that read this book to have that connection to say, you know, you are worthy because Allah's made you, you know. And mm -hmm. so, mashallah, I received amazing feedback. And um, so the reason I write is it wasn't about I want to start a business. It's, it's to make a difference. And you know, the mashallah, the feedback I kept receiving, even if it was just one person that said it's kind of saved my life or you know, it saved me from depression, you know, your book had changed my life, you know, that they're the people that I write for, you know, Inshallah. because at the end of the day, who cares about any monetary gain when, you know, you can have like that kind of, you know, difference in making to somebody's life, you know, and that's what I aim to do. So may Allah accept it from me and keep using me for good, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. after that, which book was it? Like, oh yeah. So my my it was my uh, it was my children's book. It was called Fatima al Fahiri. So I have four kids, and you know, I was thinking I want my children to be inspired by people, you know, from our history. And I realized mm -hmm. there were any books at the time. So especially Fatima al Fahiri, you know, um. Mashallah, she founded the oldest university in the world yes. and it's still operating today. So I couldn't believe it. I couldn't find anything. I thought, okay, this is that I need to start writing children's books as well now. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mashallah, I was inspired by my own children too. And uh, um, and honestly, I searched and searched. At that time, I couldn't find anything on Fatima Fahiri. And so I wrote that book in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and Mashallah, you know, um, now there's actually more, I think, um, stories, you know, about her out there. By that time, when I started writing, there wasn't. Um, and then uh, that was actually meant to be a part of an inspirational series. But what happened was, you know, having been busy with family and other responsibilities. Yes. Um, you know, you know, it just obviously starts. So the first book was released in 2017. But what I did was, when I, then I, the second one I wrote of it was Rafaida Islamia. So a lot of the stories were actually completed, you know, 2017, 2018. Okay. The, the more I researched, the more I fell in love, you know, with these stories. And I yes, thought, oh, of you, course. Know, you know what? Instead of that, then I did a, a, instead of releasing each story individually, what I did was an Instagram poll. And the feedback I received was that it's actually better to have all the stories in one, mm -hmm. you know, because it's cost effective for people. Because I try to make things easy for people. So I thought, okay, that's more cost effective. And it's actually cheaper for me as well when it comes to, you know, publishing, you know, a, a book, you know, individually. Yes. Because all the situations. And over here in the UK, we have to pay for our ISBN. Yes, of and course. And I know a lot of different countries, they don't always have to pay you know, towards a lot of the cost, um, like ISBN, sometimes you're covered. And so I decided to do that. But like I said, you know, life happens. <laughs> so I have, I, I did actually plan to publish the book about 2020. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just like my mum wasn't well. And, you know, I want to show my own children, you know, I want to rather, uh, I'm very family oriented, oriented. And uh, I want to show my own children, you know, family comes first. So obviously it was caring for my mum. I was doing other things and just with um, everything else that was happening, you know, it was a very busy time. Um, so, alhamdulillah, you know, at one point I didn't think I would actually have a best, my latest book, which is Remarkable Muslim Women um, now, um, published. So I said to my mum, you know, I made to make the bar for me and mashallah she was. Um, so that is my latest book. It's called Remarkable Muslim Women Throughout the Ages. So what I did was I compiled all the stories. And so the first story was actually aimed at a younger audience. But with this one, it is 10 and over, especially I think teenagers, mashallah, that's the feedback I have received. Mm -hmm. That inshallah it will really benefit, um, you know, it's been beneficial for teenagers as well, as well as adults, because a lot of these women, you know, a lot of Muslim women haven't heard of them. Yes, of course. Absolutely. It, it's, tr it's true. I think even when it comes to, um like the uh, the sahabiyats a lot of us mm. we don't know who they are like literally there's obviously the the most popular names that we're all accustomed to Aisha radiallahu and Khadija and you know others but subhanallah there's like a whole list of them and I realized when I was um recently I think it was well it was just last year um and I think I completed it early this year I was reading that book um The Ideal Muslimah and okay. there was like some of the, um, you know, some some parts of the book, it talks about different sahabiyat, like female companions. And I was just thinking, subhanAllah, I felt so ashamed because I just didn't know about these women. Like they was talking about their stories, you know, like mentioning their stories here and there. And you just think, subhanAllah, I don't know who these women are, you know. And we know like 
in we in our times we we know the names of some of the worst type of women like in existence like for like you know from islamic perspective these are not women that we should look up to but we know their names whether we like it or not we know who they are and i was just thinking like subhana we need more books like what you're writing basically so that we can you know be you know easily acquainted with you know these like women who have done things inspirational things like that we can look up to them have like these kind of women as role models upon us so it's, it's really good um you know I'm, I'm looking forward to getting my own copy inshallah definitely um so yeah um what would you say was your biggest inspiration um or motivation for writing your books in general to be honest because obviously it's, it's something that you said you you had an intent to become an author so what was the like you, what was your main reason for even writing them it was um you know it was for the pleasure of allah you know and um, firstly it was for that um and i I wanted um, you know, our girls, I want them to hold on to our faith because there's just so many bad ideas out there, you know, and there's so many different ideologies and we don't need them. You know, we've got Islam and you know, I want them to discover the treasure within our own religion, you know, the women the women, like you mentioned, may Allah be pleased with them, the Sahabiyat and also other very influential Muslims in history that didn't, you know, have to um compromise on their faith you know it was actually their faith that drove them to do what they did exactly. and I, th I thought that was very important so the women I have uh, mentioned in this book are very faith driven and they get their strength from Allah mm -hmm. and that was very important and um, because I think a lot of people give feminism credit you know for the empowerment of women or you know and they even Muslims unfortunately they make it out as if we'd be lost without feminism and I'm trying to say no bringing it back to the religion exactly. you know this is where you get your freedom this is where you get your rights and uh, um, we don't need to call ourselves anything else I mean I know there's a lot of Muslims that do and uh, I don't have anything against them but calling your, our, ourselves Muslim should be enough exactly you know because um that is enough subhanallah it's just unfortunate these stories aren't out there and I just felt it was kind of my responsibility then to start writing about them like I said I started writing about them and I did complete a lot of the stories a few years ago so it was really constant editing or going back um you know or had maybe overwritten you know and then I was thinking okay we don't need all this or I thought or maybe just going back just trying to make them you know very polished and uh, um, so I was really patient you know with this book and I really wanted um, to leave something valuable behind because you know at the end of the day we can't take anything with us apart from our good deeds so if you know if I die tomorrow I thought you know my children have got books you know they know our what, what you know you know they know like what's important of and I wanted it for them and I want it for other children because I love for the children what I love for my own children so that's why so um so that's what drove me you know I want people to know you know a religion and to be proud to of being Muslim instead of looking up to you know like you said there's terrible terrible role models out mm -hmm. there um and uh, you know we don't I mean even with influencers unfortunately a lot of them Absolutely. do start off being very you know like you know Mashallah, this is how you wear hijab, this is how you dress modestly. But then, you know, when, when they've reached that peak, you know, that fame, it's like, you know, it gets maybe a bit of body for them. So they need to start something else, you know. Yes. And so I feel like a lot of women, a lot of girls, unfortunately, are affected. And then, um, you know, it has like a effect, whereas, you know, on people's they get shaken thinking oh this is my role model this is who I wanted to be like but now she's taking her tab off or yeah, you know she's doing whatever she's doing and what do I do now do I just keep following her and um and I don't have obviously everybody has their weakness so I'm not judging any sister individual mm -hmm. on an individual ba basis I just thought you know what instead of Instagram influencers come on we need real more real models exactly, exactly. you know that what disappoint our daughters and you know even a lot of the women you know are affected like even with mothers you know like you know you have your kim kardashians or kim kardashian wannabes but you know even unfortunately even just everybody is affected by exactly. a lot of the stuff that's around so you know and even, even with this book it's not only even though it's targeted at muslim girls and women and um, even boys can't benefit of from course, them of and course, then, definitely. It's um, because, for them too. 
Yes, because when I was writing this book, you know, there was a theme that I realized, you know, in most of the stories, mashallah, a lot of the, um, you know, supporters of the women were their husbands or their yes. fathers mm -hmm. or their brothers. And, you know, the, the media give Islam such a bad name and they make it out that the men are the oppressors. And I'm sick and tired of listening to this and this Absolutely. was intentional well it's just after you know you know i selected the woman and i started researching i thought subhana look at that mashallah there's such such inspirational women and who was behind them you know you know strong men supporting them encouraging them exactly you know? so i think it's important because there's just too much confusion you know people can't see the tell the difference between a man and woman unfortunately these days you know it's become some kind of a big question you know exactly it's, it's, yes it's, uh, it's ridiculous subhanallah yeah. and i love what you said because it just it highlights um like what's happening today is like there's just this gap now it's the men on one side and women on, and i kind of i don't even like to say men and women it's like you they, i was saying to a sister the other day that we have this red pill movement and then you have mm. feminism you know and like yeah. one is the reaction to the other and it's like people are standing you know and it's affecting the muslims too unfortunately so everybody like people are standing on different sides nobody wants to join in the middle it's like you know if you if you speak up about women's rights you know automatically you're feminist if you speak about mm -hmm. you know um you know men having rights then you know you're a misogynist and you're, you're red pill so exactly. it's just like it's, a fun yeah. it's just it's not like that you know we're supposed to work cohesively in society and we have that in islam already that's what our religion shows us and subhanallah like because we've come, we're coming so far away from from our religion. We don't know that, you know. We already have the answers to these um, questions. And when people are telling us that Islam is misogynistic, it's like, well, actually, no, it isn't. Subhanallah. So it's affecting so many of the decisions that we make in our lives. Uh -huh. And th that's actually the reason I also included ayahs from the Quran and the authentic hadith. Yes. Because I want to really drum in that, you know, I, you know. The understanding this is from the legend this isn't feminism you know this is you know um what the Quran says or the hadith say you know so um people can't turn around and say oh this is just another feminist feminist idea and it's, it's uh you know unfortunate that um a lot of mashallah um very practicing muslim women just because they speak about the rights that allah has given us are labeled feminists wrongly exactly, um, exactly. that is an issue unfortunately um so yeah mashallah so i have also added reflections and discussion questions in the book and mashallah i've received amazing reviews um and feedback so alhamdulillah and um, mashallah it's also actually uh, um, you can obviously buy it from amazon just now but it's also in some uh, bookstores in the uk and uh, um I can't remember the address, but I think it was America or Canada. Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, so, mashallah, um, it's doing well. Excellent. Well, inshallah, we're going to put the links um, to, you know, where people can get your books in the description box, inshallah. I was, I was even just, I was having a look at your um, your Amazon as well, because alhamdulillah, that's one of the good things with that. At least it's got like the author's kind of, the author's page, so you can keep, um, you can see all the books that they've published. So, Allah um, Mubarak, we'll put that link in the description so people can easily access your books, inshallah. So, what would you say? Um, have been some of your biggest challenges um, while writing um, your books, especially the latest book? Because obviously I'm assuming that a lot of research must have had to go into it because it's so hard, especially in the English language, to get access to, um, you know, certain information when it comes to, you know, our Islamic history. Oh, yes. Oh, it was really challenging because, you know, I felt like I, there was responsibility on my shoulders because obviously this is non-fiction um and uh, i'm not a historian so i had to really be careful of what i was writing i kept double checking the sources and then i'm um, i approached sheikh salam um al azari um i don't know if you're aware of him actually he's a sheikh he normally comes on islam channel or iman channel and he's on instagram as well and he mashallah he is so helpful me i'll reward him um so he actually verified and approved my book um so that was very important but before you know he, I even knew he, what, who he was since 2017-18. I was trying to get shakes and other people, you know, it was to be honest a bit of a nightmare just to verify what I was writing. I contacted so many people, but they just weren't able to get back to me or verify anything. So, you know, I think that was an issue as well, because even on Instagram, we have some Muslim historians, but they never even replied to 
<laughs> back to my email. It's been so long. So I think um, it's so important when somebody's trying to do something good for the sake of Allah, especially, you know, can, these kind of books are needed. Um, I think it's so important to, you know, just take the time to reply, even if you are busy or just say, okay, I can't help you, but so-and-so can. Yes. So that's why I really appreciate, you know, Sheikh Dr. Salam Al-Azri because he was incredible, mashallah. Uh, if he wasn't, I mean, okay, if he wasn't available, he'll be like, okay, I can get back to you maybe in a month or I'm aware of this now, but I really appreciated that he always, you know, you know, kept in touch. And uh, um, so that was really good because that was a real challenge. Um, another thing was, I think, um, I kind of, it was just, um, and even just finding out who, who who should I write about, just try to research because there's so many women, well, I mean, could have of included. Of course, but, once, but you, once you really... start the ball rolling, isn't it? It just yeah, becomes so, like, yes, from Allah. Yeah, so that was a very difficult decision as well because even like, you know, if like if I didn't mention say obviously there's so many incredible women in Islam and I couldn't include all of them you know mm -hmm. so I just the, the stories that I thought you know what might be more um you know that more the the girls the, the young girls can relate to so I could included a lot of them as well because I thought you know what can be more relevant to today yes. so I don't want people to think because these are women this was in the past and that's it no they're still relevant to us today we can still learn from their lives and apply the lessons you know to our own lives um so that was quite difficult to be honest um but i have said in the dedication that it's also dedicated to you know all the women that haven't been included in, in this book but yes. are all worthy of being mentioned because i think that's an easy criticism to say oh what about her what about this person mm -hmm. um, but it's such a difficult decision you know so much i'm really happy with the choices that i have made because um they are really inspiring women and you know never know there might be a book two in future <laughs> yeah, well, i was just gonna say so, i was just gonna say no reason why you can't have a second book so final lies like you could yeah. do a whole series potentially yeah i know but it was a lot of work you know my sons have actually been saying to me mom you've been writing about all these women when are you writing about you know books for us you know men i said mm -hmm. obviously that's book is for you as well exactly. but so i have started my second project and you know in, initially i was meant to write about women and men but because you know there isn't much on women at all i thought no prioritize the ladies first exactly. and then the men can wait, <laughs> wait. So inshallah, mm -hmm. um, I've been, you know, and that's actually, mashallah, my kids are my inspiration as well because they kind of keep me going. My son said to me the other day, so mom, what that other book, have you even finished it yet? And, and I thought, oh God, I haven't been working on it. So I started yesterday. So they kind of really, you know, I think even realizing they kind of motivate me. Good, like, okay, he really, he really wants his book. I better get on top of this. Of course, subhanAllah. But it's, it's really important. I think it's nice that, you, I mean, you've mentioned that you've got sons and you're writing these books and they they definitely are for the, the men as well and the young boys and, you know, because they need to know these stories too, because this is how, you know, if they know what good women are, then they're, they're more likely, inshallah, pick good women to marry when they grow older instead of, yeah. you know, being the kind of conditioned into, um, you know, um, you know thinking that a specific type of woman is a good woman when actually she isn't because that's what society teaches the men they teach the men that oh you know your woman should be like this you know this is the kind of woman that you should be going for and most of it is literally just based on looks it's not based on the woman's character and her personality it's based on how she looks so it's important and um, that even the young boys they they know that these books are for them as well and there's nothing wrong with them you know no, knowing and learning about um you know these kind of women and reading about um reading books that are technically or, or so supposedly geared towards women because when we as um, muslim women when we uh, um you know learning about all these different scholars of the past we never say oh well these are men so therefore like it's not applicable to us you know obviously yeah. we want to hear about women as well but you know we we easily accept that information like you know we it's digestible yeah. for us because we know we, we accept knowledge and we we know that you know this is something good this is positive role models so it has to be the same the other way around too so exactly. another reason why why these books are so important and and it, it illustrates as well how we need to start retraining 
ourselves and you know retraining our children from these young ages I, you know because I've, I've been writing an article actually recently and it's um I haven't, I haven't released it yet but basically it's just talking about the hijab in general and why we need to educate the boys about the hijab you know not just specifically the hijab for men you know that the what the part of the aura of the men that is supposed to be covered but what hijab is for women because now you know with as i said there's a kind of two sides thing going on these days sometimes it's like the, a brother if he talks about the hijab you know the women are like oh why are you talking about hijab men need to stop talking about hijab but it's just like well we're here to support each other when the boys are taught from a young age what hijab is and they're taught to respect it and you know then it makes it easier for women when they grow that you know they know that there's this you know generation of young men who appreciate the hijab because a lot of the women's challenges young girls for example who want to wear the hijab a lot of their challenges are actually coming from muslim men in the community who don't um want them to wear the hijab or they don't respect the fact that you know muslim women cover you know and it's, it, it might sound um strange to some but you know this happens a lot because i've seen um when i was living in the uk at least so i was living in newcastle for quite some time but i've seen um a lot of cases where young muslim girls are not wearing hijab and the reason why they're not wearing it is because their fathers actually don't want them to wear it because they think that it's going to negatively affect their lives it's going to keep them back from getting so-called jobs like jobs that, you know and, and a decent education and all this kind of thing so we have that that's going on now so if they don't have support from the men and you know obviously even the young men coming up if they don't feel that you know the hijab is something that you know they they don't understand it for example then why will they respect it and why would they then support the women who wear it and you know it's like the women who do wear it as well need to um you know have that support so that they can feel encouraged that the, the hijab is not something that means that they are behind or backwards or something like that because th there are a lot of these kind of um misconceptions uh, and you know kind of beliefs in the muslim community yeah i mean you know what unfortunately it's not only just men it's a woman as well of course um, it is yeah it's called huda's hijab mm -hmm. um and you know it's suitable for girls over eight or nine um and you know i had a um a stall once a book stall and next to me was a sister she had a mendy stall and see a lot of the children mashallah they were coming to my bookstore and they wanted to buy the books and even you know bought a, a brother and sister was a boy and girl they really wanted to buy food as hijab but unfortunately the mother just wouldn't allow it you know and i thought what kind of message is that to send to children that it's okay to pay this much for you know beauty but you don't want to pay for a book and mm -hmm. um so, so i thought so, you know, like i said i don't do it for the money and so these children were saying it's okay if we look through your book and i'm like okay you know that's fine to stand you and just flip through it and mashallah they really enjoyed it and they were just like you know giggling and stuff and i thought why why then i asked the mother why don't you want to buy her the book and she said i don't want her to wear a hijab just now so, and i thought that's such a shame because mm -hmm. you know you know why you know if your child is inclined towards the hijab and they've got a natural love for it why stop them and mashallah um even like some of the feedback i received uh, girls you know guidance guidance is only from Allah mm -hmm. and mashallah people the girls were guiding to wear the hijab you know uh, a mother you know in one of the families a mother never wore it none of the aunties wore it I think it was just a grandmother and that young girl you know the you know mother told me that she was eager to get ho home from a holiday so that she could <laughs> re wear the hijab because she um, was inspired by my story and uh, um and that's amazing so much oh, there gosh. are some you know families that are supportive and there's others that you know there's a lot actually that say we don't want her you know she's too young or we don't want her to wear it till she's ready in case she takes it off but the thing is it's like anything you have to train yourself who cares if she takes it off if, at a young age at least by the time that she, it's burned on her or you know i mean she feels confident enough She'll wear it because the first step is understanding why you wear it and getting the love. And you know, just it's just like driving, like you know, I think it was um 
you or you know it's just like doing learning a new skill exactly you and it's getting it can't, it's me. getting accustomed to it as well because if, if yeah. the girls are, are allowed to wear it from a young age it just means mm-hmm. that it becomes a normal piece of clothing for them to wear not something they have to learn to put on at a later stage where they feel like oh this is i'm not comfortable in this you know and people are going to be staring at me they're already accustomed to wearing the hijab and they will understand that it's not something that's that's going to hold them back in their lives as well because they're already used to wearing it subhanallah so it's, it's so mm-hmm. important so important subhanallah so um sister um who would you say have been your biggest supporters while writing your books um, you know honestly i think it's subhanallah um you know i think like if your intention is right i think that will drive you so even if you don't have that much support you know around you or they don't understand people don't understand why you're doing this or your mission i think as long as you have your intention and then allah will be your biggest supporter honestly i think and um and also mashallah when i first started instagram i made a you know a really good friend um she had a, like a a marriage page or I can't remember what it was called and uh, she used to share very inspirational marriage quotes and uh, um, so mashallah her and I have remained friends and and she's I think she's been my biggest supporter because um, if I've you know written a story I've shared it with her mashallah and then you know you know she's kind of been a very important part of my journey so I think she's definitely been my biggest supporter and also like my children, like they always, uh, mashallah, when I'm writing, you know, they're the first people to hear it and the first people to give me feedback and they're the one who said, mom, why don't you know, when are you writing about this or have you completed your story? So I think, mashallah, um, my children, <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, um, and, you know, my friend, that I met, I've never met her, you know, ever. And but mashallah, mm-hmm. it's like we come together for the sake of Allah, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what we discuss, and then we go, you know, on our separate ways. So subhanallah, you know, it's very um, you know, Miller reward with Jennifer for those and accept all our prayers because people mm-hmm. like that are very rare. So very rare, you know, every you know, so mashallah she does it and sometimes when I used to want to even include her name in the book at the beginning, she said, No, no, I don't want my name, you know, but I was like, I want to include it. So I have included her name at the um, back of, um, you know, in the acknowledgements of this book. So it's just amazing how Allah makes ways for you. So she's been a very um, important part of my journey, I would say. Alhamdulillah, tabarakallah. That's, that's beautiful, alhamdulillah. And it just reminds me of that hadith as well that, um, that talks about um, people who will be saved. Um, there being a last shade on the day of judgment to people that they meet only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, may Allah make us um, of those. I mean... Um, Alhamdulillah. So what advice would you give to other Muslim women who feel that they have a book to write or they feel inspired to write something, but they, you know, maybe don't have the confidence or they, they're finding it hard to get started? Okay, so um, Mari Musaf is actually my pen name. Um, so I'm I'm a very private person. <laughs> um, so I don't really share that much and I didn't really want people to know who I was because I was doing it for the sake of Allah and that's how I started my page and my books but it was just only when I wrote one of my books which is called Mr Blue in Rainbow Planet that is like um, a story to combat Islamophobia and racism it's only then when I was um, uh, interviewed by my local paper that I thought you know what fine you know it's me <laughs> you know <laughs> let the world know who it is so mashallah because um i felt that my book was bigger than me and was more important the message that it had um so i had made it with a local MP- msp and everything so i think if you're worried about you know privacy or anything like that you can always start with a pen name and uh, um i think also don't judge yourself just to, um write what's um, in your heart and don't be scared of other people's judgment I mean what drives me is um, you know doing things for the sake of Dava for our religion you know to give you know for for our deen so it just depends what they're inspired by and if they think their message is important enough to be out there you know then they should share it because at the end of the day in we, we're going to leave one day and at least our words inshallah will carry on and they'll become a sadka jariya for us 
Absolutely, absolutely. Subhanallah. So, um, inshallah, what we're going to do, put all the links to your books in the description box so that people can get access to it. But it's been really pleasurable talking to you, sister. I'm, I'm so happy that I, I got this opportunity to do an interview with you because I'll be honest, I didn't expect to get a reply because, mashallah, your Instagram looks really like, mashallah, Alamabadik, so popular. So, usually, like, when people have really popular accounts, they don't, you don't hear back from them. Or sometimes, I, I think most of the time, people don't get your the messages because it's not um if like they're not following somebody for example so alhamdulillah i'm really glad that i got this opportunity to to be able to talk to you alhamdulillah and mashallah you're from lovely scotland one of my favorite places so alhamdulillah yeah so it's exactly like a careful opportunity for reaching out um my yucky sister my yucky sister have a have a beautiful day and um yes I'll, i'd love to hear from you again in the future and i'm sure inshallah that the listeners will really benefit from this so um we'll inshallah speak again hopefully in the future inshallah that's great um i'll just say in my books are i know you're going to be sharing the links mm -hmm. um but you can get also free um cousin sheets and other free resources oh, from my www.muslimatoday.com Muslim without the H um, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Muslim Today at the Muslim Bookshelf um, and on Facebook Absolutely, we'll put all those links in the description box inshallah inshallah that's great. And also, please, if you enjoy my books, do read and um, write a review because mashallah, I receive so much positive feedback that you know, not as many reviews. Yep, this is this is one of the biggest yes, problems that we have with the with authors. Um, you know, authors mention actually a lot of sister was saying the same thing. We need to start leaving reviews to support our Muslim authors. Okay, so let's let's try to make sure we do that. If you're listening, inshallah, and you know you've read this book, please just leave a review, inshallah. Okay, because it it really helps. Thank you. sister. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.